worries. All right, I'm going to pivot one more time just because uh, it's getting late. We're going to wrap it up here soon, and I know my kids uh, would be remiss if I didn't uh, ask more about uh, how you got the gig at uh, Disney Pixar as uh, Cruz Ramirez. You know, um, my show got canceled in 2015, and uh, people don't know this, but I was I had been guest hosting on The View because the network, ABC, hadn't promoted my show. And I wanted people to know that my show existed. So I would co-host The View for a week on hiatus weeks when we weren't, uh, when the production was off for the show. And I started realizing that people really, like the people at, at The View and ABC News, they kind of seemed to like me. And immediately I thought, oh man, I think they're gonna want me for The View. The day my show- Did got- you not want that gig? No, I did not want that gig. You liked, did you like visiting and just being a guest host? Yeah, I did. That's where I met Whoopi. So okay. I became friends with Whoopi and I became friends with like Rosie O'Donnell and uh, um, Nicole Wallace. That was the year that we were all there. Okay. And I, I like kind of popping in and leaving. Mentally, I couldn't handle it because after every episode, my Twitter would just be bombarded with hateful shit. But mentally, I just couldn't. I just could, I, I knew the job wasn't for me. So my show gets canceled. I'm doing uh, a weekend at Fort Lauderdale at the Improv back then. And I get the call that it's canceled. And uh, 10 minutes later, I get a call from ABC offering me the view. And immediately I'm like, uh, no. And basically they're like, oh, she wants more money. No, I don't. Well, <laughs> that was actually my next question. Was it a like... If they had thrown more money at you, would you have taken it? Because I assume you made a good chunk of money um, for Cristela, like enough to the money. Of... The money was really good for the view. Okay. Like it was in, like they, they more than Cristela, I'm assuming, or, or no? Okay, I, and you still say, turned it down. I still turned it down, I, and it was back and forth. I think three times overall. People would they, like my reps would come back. Are you sure you don't want the view? Like they did, this, they, they're adding this, they're adding this, da da da. And I finally do you think uh, again. I'm on the outside here. Um, do you think you get pushback from your representation because they see the commission money that they can <laughs> potentially make on that? Well, you know, <laughs> Being an agent, you know, I kind of think about that. Like, wait, I can see them going, "Hey, come on, you should probably try this, dude." Of course, but they're running I- their ten percent in their head. <laughs> When I signed with my agency, I told them, well, first of all, when I signed, uh, my old agent, so Stu had been let go from his agency, right? So I had nowhere to go. And um, I had already booked. I had just booked. Uh, I was I was just about to do all the gigs from the NACA that I booked, all the 100 right. plus gigs or whatever. WME didn't know that. So I intentionally didn't tell them that I had all this money coming from college gigs and stuff or whatever. Um, so you wouldn't have to give them the 10% or no, whatever? No, because I didn't want them thinking, because you know what I realized at the old agency was that because I was doing so well in college gigs, they only saw me as a college comic and nothing else. So I could never give them a script to read that I wrote. I could never, they didn't see me as a writer. They didn't see me, they just saw me like I was, the cash cow for college gigs. Right. And um, I wanted to kind of get an agency with that, that saw me as maybe something else. So I told WME when I was signing with them, I'm like, I know this sounds weird, but I want you to believe me when I say it. Like, I- I'm going to say no to a lot of things. I don't do this for the money. I do it because I really love doing this. But I promise you, when I say yes, it's going to be good. You know, and uh, I remember my stand-up agent said, I'm not here. She said, uh, she agreed and she said, I'm not here to make you money. I'm here to make you a lifelong career. Nice. Well, and, that's a good agent. Yeah. And, 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 and since then, like they always knew, they always knew that when I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to do it. But they were getting- Don't ask me twice. <laughs> my first answer sticks. <laughs> well, yeah. And the last time that they came back with the view offer, I told my agents like, if I hear about it one more time, like I, I'm gonna have to start looking for other representation because you're not listening to me. And they and, shut it down. Yeah, and 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 that was the last I heard of it. People didn't understand. Like, why didn't you want to host the View? Like, what it, it was for me. I'm like, I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready for that kind of job. Look, all I knew then, the View told me that I was good at doing talk shows. 
So now that was a skill that I didn't know I had. Right. So I could use it for something else. I, I'm still, and ultimately something to fall back on later yeah, if you needed to. I'm a comic. I like doing stand up. Like right. I love doing stand up, you know? Like, you know, and so um that day I told them, like, this is my last, last time I'm saying no, I'm not gonna do it, da da da. And then basically they they obliged. They were they were like, Okay. And they're like, Well, what now? You know, basically, and I'm like, I don't know. You know, a I, Disney movie. It'll come back, it'll come when it comes. Literally a week later. I get a call from my agents and they're like, Hey, Pixar wants to know if you want to, uh, to go visit them. And like, that was all I, that was all I knew. And just I was to visit. Like, yeah. Just to visit, just to visit. Chuck, just to visit. Right. So I was like, okay. You had no insight, like what project or none Chuck, none. So I, I was like, I'm not joking. Part of me thought was, part of me thought like, I guess this is what they do with people in Hollywood. They just, at some point, everybody gets to go to Pixar. Like I had no idea. Like it made no sense. Take your client to Pixar day. <laughs> like, seriously, John, I mean, why? Why would they want to meet with me? Like, why just would come they want skipping to in. <laughs> John, I mean, seriously. Take it all in, Christella. <laughs> you might not be with us in a year. It's your Willy Wonka day. We all get one. Like it was just like so ridiculous. Like, so ridiculous. Uh, so ridiculous. And, uh, I, I I went in like they're in Emeryville, which is like an hour flight from me. And um, I was like, okay, I'll go. And I really didn't know why. And then um, I got there, and they made me sign in a uh, non-disclosure and NDA because they were going to give me the real tour of Pixar where they would like oh. me through all this stuff. I, it is so cool. Like nice. it is, there's, there's rooms in between walls and stuff. Like that's all I'll say. It's really cool. And um, then we get to this conference room and they have all the car stuff out. And then they like, I'm just sitting there and they start telling me the plot of cars three and they start to, uh, showing me these drawings. And at the end I'm like, Okay, well, I wish you luck. <laughs> you know, like, I had no idea what they wanted, and then they were like, "We want you to audition for Cruise." And I was like, "Had they had a mock-up yet already of the um, of the actual character? Uh, like, I no, guess without, they had, they or they just had photos wooden, and pictures? They had a wooden base of the car. Um, the car was actually uh, the face is actually modeled after me." So okay. like when we were doing VO, they would actually have a, like a camera right to me so that the illustrators could draw the face according to my reactions. Oh, so, um, but yeah, I had no idea they were offering me the job. I went into the studio at Pixar, I read the lines, and uh, I wanna say two days later, I got offered the role. And then uh, it was actually initially a small part. And then I started telling them stories about my childhood and growing up and um, the story of Cruz Ramirez in Pixar is my childhood story. So they, I actually had to sign another contract saying that it was okay for them to use my my, my stories. So that, and so- And that made more money, I'm sure. It was a thing where I was like, well, you know, I mean, I don't wanna brag, but I'm an amusement park ride in many locations. So it, it's this thing where, again, I know it sounds weird, but I think that's kind of what's, all of this is kind of what what's helped me. Uh, by the way, when I pitched my show, WME did the same thing with me where they're just like, go meet this person. Just tell them your story. Like, it's just so interesting. Like, just tell them. And I didn't know that I was pitching a show. Well, it goes back to what I, did, I said earlier. This is your likability and, and a good client. I, I think that they probably realized what they had with you. Like, this this person is genuine. And when she starts talking about her story, I think it comes across as real and not, you know, forced. Yeah. You know, as well, some because, comedians do. Yeah, ex exactly. And it, it's also that thing where for me, I just, I just love what I get to do that uh, I like talking about it, you know? And for me, it's just, people don't understand. I never expected any of this, you know? So for me, I didn't even know this was possible. So I always literally go into these situations thinking I could never do anything because 
I never expected it. So I go into everything kind of like, this is so cool. Like I go into the, everything with that mentality where I'm like, I can't believe we get to do this, which right. is how I kind of treat a lot of the people that follow me on social media. Where I'm like, oh, guys, I'm going to show you this. We're going to get to do this. So it seems like, you know, like I'm, they're all part of it because they are like for me, I, I think that when you're so surprised and also grateful about what's happening and you're living in the moment, there's just, I think it kind of takes the stress away, you know, and there's just, there's no expectation. Right. Well, my mom always said, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And it's it feels, true. feels like uh, you're living that life here. So what was the uh, first big expense that you spent with that first uh, residual check from Disney? <laughs> and I assume, do they still pay you every year? How does that work? Yeah. So you, twice they, a year, you get a just Disney they, check they, just they, rolls they, in. I get money. For life. <laughs> Who needs a retirement plan? And that, as long as they keep, as long as people keep watching cars, I, I'll, I'll do it. I don't know. And yeah. also, like, if there's ever a fourth one, I mean, I have to be in that one. So it's pretty well, cool. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but um, the first thing I bought, <laughs> you can tell me. It's gonna be so insane. I went to Target and bought everything I wanted. <laughs> What do you mean? Like, <laughs> like every like you went down the aisle and just like no, supermarket no. sweeped it and just put oh, everything. <laughs> what a great show! No, for me, I um, I went to women's clothing and I bought clothes that I wanted that were a regular price. <laughs> that's, that's the first awesome. thing I did. That is awesome. <laughs> that is the first thing I did. <laughs> like, that's the first thing I did. I'll take two. Remember, oh, one in each color. <laughs> I'm that person now. I dress like a cartoon character. I'm like, I find a shirt and then I just buy several of that shirt. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking right there, and we'll send you a free gift. There's no free gifts. Sorry.